Okay, so I will be recording this lecture. Uh, some of us, some of our friends are not able to uh, get into the school yet. So, because uh, this will be a hybrid uh, online and on site lecture. So, because the class is not very big, so any point of time, if you have any question, comment, uh, just feel free to stop me. Okay. Uh, that goes the same for uh, those who are online. All right. Let me just uh, make sure everything is all right. Okay. So uh, today we will be. Oh, by the way, if are you able to see the screen? You should be able to see the screen for those online. I'm sharing it on my side. All right. So at any point of time, if you have problem with the audio or the screen, just let me know. Okay. Great. All right. So today we're going to talk about planning, problem solving, and autonomous agents. Okay. So it's actually something very exciting. Um, I guess uh, you guys already been through a few lectures, and uh, today's topic. Uh, it's probably something that is uh, very related to uh, AI and also robotics, not just uh, brain connective. All right. So just a very quick introduction about myself. I'm actually from GJUI. Okay, uh, your friendly neighbor. Okay, uh, not from GJE, but uh, for this uh, lecture, I will be talking about um, planning and autonomous agent. Okay, so. A quick self introduction before we go into the technical aspect. Uh, my research is actually quite straightforward. We work on three main areas robotics, vision, and imaging. Okay, so uh, we do a few biomedical, image, uh, biomedical imaging, uh, things like a microscope uh, manipulator as well. Okay, and uh, we do computer vision, helping the robot or the machine to understand. Uh, the surrounding by looking at uh, images. Okay, and robotics is actually my main uh, topic. And of course, it usually revolves around uh, application like surgical robots. Okay. So for the teaching, uh, I will just uh, very quickly show, um, most of the time I will be teaching robotics and control system in uh, GJUI. Okay, sometimes I do uh, dynamics and also signal processing courses. Right, uh, I do help out in uh, GJE courses like uh, this time round, uh, BCA I4, uh, talking about planning, problem solving, and autonomous agent. Okay. Okay. So now let's get down to the content uh, of this planning. So we actually need to understand, or rather, need to answer three questions. So what is planning and um, why is it important? And then later on, how do we go about doing it? All right. So the first thing to ask uh, is what really constitutes planning? Right. So when we talk about planning, uh, whether it's uh, in solving a problem or uh, helping the robot to plan certain tasks, what are we actually talking about? Okay. So uh, general definition, is that we are trying to formulate a set of actions uh, to solve problem and also achieve certain uh, desirable outcome or in this case goals. Okay, that means we try to uh, come up with the set of action that can help us achieve certain goal. Okay, so in doing so, uh, it involves deciding what kind of action to take so that we can change something from an initial state to a desired state. And very often it is uh, a little bit challenging. We have to work within constraint. Okay, so it is often under constraints. Okay, so for example, if you try to, some of them could be quite mathematical, uh, or uh, something that has been studied by the mathematics uh, community in the past. How do you actually bring a sofa from one configuration to another? Okay, one state to another, uh, cutting through a corner, and what kind of uh, dimensions uh, will be involved? 
And a famous problem is this uh, piano moving problem. Okay, so if you have a piano, you want to move it uh, from one point and pose, okay, one position and pose to another position and pose, okay. So how do you go about doing it? What path do you take? And there are also things like <clears throat> obstacles, okay, within the boundary of the workspace and avoiding certain obstacles. Okay, so when you move the piano, you don't want, uh, you, you cannot actually get into obstacles. So all these are constraints, right? So all these will uh, be what we have to answer when we do a planning problem. Okay? So these are actually something that we see almost uh, in everyday life. Okay? So when we try to formulate a set of action to solve problem and achieve certain goal, we are actually moving something from one state to another. Okay? So as we move from one state to another, most of the time they are infinite uh, or more than one way of doing it. Okay? From point A to point B, you can take different path. Okay? And sometimes you want to take the optimal path, sometimes you want to uh, take certain path that um, uh, is uh, complying to constraints. Okay? So let's say if you are driving uh, and you want to park your car, right? So uh, you have you are in this orange car. You want to have your car to end up in the parking slot like this, okay? So it seems to be kind of an easy problem. You just shift the car into it, but they are constrained because the wheel traction doesn't allow you to translate uh, perpendicularly, right? So you have to do some maneuvering such that uh, you move from this uh, initial position, okay, to this final okay, position or pose. We call that a uh, uh, different state, okay, from one state to a final state. All right, the same for robot. Let's say you have a robot here. You want the robot to reach out for a cup, okay? How do you go about telling the robot what to do in order to uh, end up in that state to uh, grab? the blue card, right? So in this case, you are trying to formulate all the actions. And there could usually be more than one solution, okay? So there, there are not, uh, it, it may not be a unique solution, okay? You can actually do a few uh, different way of doing it, okay? So you kind of need to put in constraint and some condition where you can optimize. So it's actually an optimization problem, right? When we talk about planning, okay? So in this case, of course, uh, because the wheel doesn't allow you to move the car in this direction, so you cannot uh, bring your car here and move this way, okay? You have to uh, turn along the wheel, okay? Such that it will end up eventually in this parking slot, okay? And of course, uh, this is um, this this kind of problem is actually quite common. Okay, in physics, you look at things like uh, holonomic constraint, the kind of uh, input that you can send in, okay, to do uh, the change in the state. Okay, in this case, your steering wheel can actually only do left, right, and you can uh, move your car forward and backward. So of course, you can steer left with a combination of forward so that you will move uh, slightly to your left, okay? So these are some of the uh, idea about it. Okay, for the robot, uh, most of the time, if it is in a three-dimensional space, right? In three-dimensional space, let's say if you are just in a two-dimensional space, you want to move from point A to point B, okay? Point B. You can do a few different paths, okay? There are many, many different paths. You can kind of spiral inwards until you reach B. Okay, so there are more than one way. And in this case, two-dimensional wise, uh, if it's a point, you need to specify two state uh, variables, okay? That is X and Y, right? You need to... Uh, if I want you to describe the position of the car, you can tell me X and Y. But is that enough? 
So how many degree of freedom do you think you will have uh, in a 2D plane like this? Okay, degree of freedom is basically the number of variables you will need to describe the state of this thing that you have. So let's say I want to describe this orange car. How many numbers do you think I need to have? Is two enough? So if I tell you X and Y, is it enough? It's not enough, right? I heard some. Sorry? Exactly, yeah. So other than the position, you also need the pose or the orientation. Okay, so in this case, uh, you kind of need to give um, three variables. Okay, say theta. All right. So in this case, uh, the degree of freedom in this uh, task space is actually x, y, theta. Okay, so that is for your 2D uh, case, a planar case. Okay, so what happened for a 3D uh, problem? Let's say if we have an object in 3D, how do we how do we actually um, define this the uh, state of this object in this case? How many? What is the minimum minimum number of variables that we will need? If I have a rigid body in three D space, is three enough? Okay, so like what you say, you need a. Uh, position and orientation. So position, you definitely need X, Y, Z. And you also need the orientation. Uh, usually we call this row pitch yaw, alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, so you actually need six different uh, variables to um, talk about your, to actually describe this uh, rigid body. Okay, so the degree of freedom here, is actually six degree of freedom in the R space. Okay, so in general, you will also need six joints in this robot. Okay, to be able to describe uh, what is happening at the end effector. Okay, so you have three translation and three rotation. So alpha, beta, and gamma you can see as a rotation in the x, y, z axis. Okay, so we call it row pitch yaw is because um, yeah, this is a bit harder for me to draw. Okay, we if you have an arrow plane like this, okay. Other than knowing the position, okay, you also need to know the orientation, so you can fix a reference axis, okay. Okay. So, of course, the origin here can tell you the position and the, this plane, there are three, are, there are three degree of freedom in translating in the x, y uh, direction. And at the same time, it can also do rotation in the z axis, sorry, x axis, z axis, and y axis. Okay? Okay? So now you actually have a three degree of freedom for the orientation. So in a general free space in 3D, okay, you are looking at six degree of freedom okay so let's say if i want to have a robot to be able to position and orientate this uh, object in 3d space okay say if i have an object in 3d space okay i will actually need um to have six input so that i can fully uh position this um object, right? So just like my arm, I can actually 
do one degree of freedom, two degree of freedom, three degree of freedom. So in the configuration space, okay, you can have six inputs. Q1, usually we call this joint Q1, Q2, Q3, and until Qn. And if you uh, want to be able to completely orientate and position something with the robot arm, you need at least six degree of freedom. Okay? And this six degree of freedom needs to be independent. Right? So that you can uh, position something. Okay? So we need to kind of be able to represent the state of something. And we also need to be able to come up with the action that will eventually bring something from one state to another. Okay? So we need to know how much to translate, how much to rotate if we want to uh, program a robot to do something. Okay? So all these are part of uh, this uh, planning uh, process. Okay? So like what I mentioned, what I uh, say earlier on is nothing but coming out with a set of action that will achieve certain goals. Okay? And typically when we talk about planning problem, especially in the context of robotics, we will see things like path planning. Okay, path planning, uh, one example of course uh, is say you have a vehicle, okay, you want to know the route that will bring the, ve the vehicle from an initial position to a goal, to a final position. Okay, that is a goal that we call it. Okay, but in this case, you don't need to know the time information. Okay, you don't need to know when uh, at uh, t equal to 1, where is the position of the car, t equal to 2, where is the position of the car. You just need to know the route, okay, that the car take. Okay, so just like the parallel parking problem, okay, as long as you do this action, okay, uh, you can spend 2 minutes here, okay, you can spend 2 hours here, as long as you bring the path to here, okay, you have a good path that can uh, achieve the goal that you set out doing. Okay, so there is a path planning uh, problem. But you need to work within the constraint. You cannot say you push a car from here all the way in because there is a constraint where you cannot, um, a physical constraint of the tire, the wheels of your car. Okay? And so motion planning, just now was path planning. Okay, motion planning is actually uh, concerned with the time, okay? It's actually path planning plus time scale. Okay, so at t equal to two, something must be at some point in space or yeah, some coordinate system, okay? So, uh, of course, if you want this plane to this aeroplane to say move in a certain motion, okay, you need a combination of Q1, Q2 all the way until Q6. Actually, this robot has got seven joints. Yeah, but that is a redundancy problem. But uh, the point here is that you need to combine all this Q accordingly at the right time uh, so that this part here will perform a certain path correctly. Okay, so this is actually motion planning. You are concerned with the time. Okay? So, Q, T, meaning Q is a function of time. Okay? Will be plot against time. So, the horizontal axis will be time. Alright? So, the trajectory will be on a time scale. Okay? So, this is like a graph where this is your QT over time, okay? For path, it's not, it's a little bit simpler, where you don't need to consider time, okay? So for path, your axis could be, say, Y and X, like this. So you don't care at T equal to 2, where is my car, as long as the car is actually uh, within this, um, curve here, then it is following the path. So that is path. Okay? 
And task planning is something more abstract. Okay, when we talk about task planning, okay, we want to determine a procedure, uh, say from moving from one state to another, eventually uh, achieving something desirable. So for example, in medical intervention, let's say you have a tumor, uh, I mean, someone in this uh, picture here have a tumor that uh, you want to treat okay, as a doctor, you want to maybe send a needle here to burn away the soft tissue. Okay, so what are the procedures that you need to uh, do? Okay, you need to make sure that it covers all this tumor and sending in the needle from one to another. It will burn higher uh, tumor in this case. So uh, these are surgical planning, okay, where you construct the model, okay, the patient model through medical images, and then you come out with the right path and um, execute uh, the path for the robot using motion planning to eventually achieve this uh, task planning problem, okay? So maybe I should uh, use a slightly different color for each of these. So this is kind of like path planning. This is kind of like motion planning. And we have a task plan. Okay. So when we put this in the context of robot, uh, robot, they are actually, of course, different people have slightly different uh, definition for what should be a robot. But in this case, okay, we can look at it as just machine that we design. Uh, to help us achieve certain tasks, okay, while interacting with the environment, okay? So you know that the robot cannot do something that doesn't obey physical law, okay? Most of the time in this case, uh, the dynamics of the system will actually determine how the robot interacts with the environment, okay? And you have certain uh, tasks that you want the robot or some um, goals that you want the robot to achieve. Okay, and of course, uh, some other living creature could also do all this, but they are not um, they are not artificially designed. So machine that are artificially designed uh, in this case, uh, or rather robot is actually uh, specifically referring to machines that are artificially designed that can accomplish tasks while interacting with the environment. Okay, so of course it encompasses things like sensing, action, and planning. Okay, so the planning part is uh, important. So in a uh, robotics context, the artificial intelligence is uh, specifically designed to perform mechanical tasks. Okay. That means most of the time the robot will be moving something from one point or one state to another state. It's either moving something else in the environment or moving itself, okay? Like the car, uh, a vehicular robot, okay? Uh, this uh, drone is also doing the same thing. Okay? So in this case, uh, to differentiate all the various uh, planning that we have talked about, okay, they are path planning, they are uh, motion planning, trajectory planning and motion planning, okay? So in a case of a path planning problem, like you have a robot, okay? You want the robot to bring the cup from one point to another point. Say this is a conveyor belt, okay? It's rotating or revolving around. And then you have the robot taking water to put on the plate or the saucer here so that uh, people sitting here can get uh, the drink that they want, okay? So this part here, okay, bringing this uh, from one point to another, okay, is actually a path planning problem, okay. But because the conveyor belt is also moving, okay, you need to make sure that it 
bring this card at the right time. Okay, so that's trajectory planning. Okay, you need to coordinate all your joints such that they will do this uh, correctly. Okay, and of course, most of the time, uh, you may also have other robots or even human or other agents that are in this environment. Okay, so you need to work within the constraint, uh, the dynamic constraint. Okay, so you need to also consider uh, cases like this uh, for your motion planning. All right. So the role of uh, planning in robotics is um, actually quite straightforward. Okay, say the first thing that uh, we usually start off with is to uh, model the physics of the system. Okay, so this part here is kind of like the uh, kinematics and dynamic. You know how the robot work um, so that when you send an input, it will have a certain output. Okay, but uh, there's other than the design problem, the modeling problem, you also need to uh, design or develop the right control system, okay, that can tell you what kind of input to send in so that it will have a desirable outcome when interacting with the environment. Okay, so that's a control problem. For planning problem is higher level, okay, when you are uh, doing a planning for your robot, okay, you actually take in a uh, perception, okay, and send in command to your control system such that the control system will come out with the right input, okay, to send into your robot system and interact with the environment so as to come out with the uh, eventual outcome, okay? So this part here is a higher level uh, um, problem that you are trying to solve, okay? So like what I mentioned earlier on, you model the system, okay, with the kinematics representation and dynamic model. So uh, you need to define the state, okay? Or sometimes we call that the configuration of the robot, okay? And the dynamic model will kind of uh, define the constraint that you have to work with it. All right? So in a planning system, okay, you can actually do online planning if you have perception, telling your robot what is happening to the environment, okay? So this part here, Let me just. This perception part is actually giving you uh, information about the environment. This, this is a bit small. Okay. And so you can also do this uh, online planning, okay, where you um, change your plan um, as you perceive the environment, right, as you interact with the environment. Okay, so we roughly see or answer the question about what planning is, right? The next thing is to ask ourselves why, why is it important? Why do we need uh, the robot to be able to plan? Of course, in the context of uh, robot motion planning, uh, this is something very obvious, okay, since by definition the robot will have to accomplish, ac accomplish tasks, okay, by moving in the real world or moving something in the real world. Okay, so of course motion planning is important, right, and planning is actually coming out with all the action or uh, the tasks that uh, the robot will have to do in order to achieve certain outcome, okay. So if you look at this uh, walking robot, uh, this is what we call a four-legged robot, quadpedal robot, okay? Um, for it to be able to do certain tasks, say for example, rescue mission, okay? You will have to navigate the environment, like climbing the stairs and everything. You will be able to perceive the environment. Like this coming down the stairs, uh, you can actually choose to turn around and then uh, move down. Uh, in the backward position, all right? So it doesn't always have to be the camera in front, etc. So it kind of make decision in how to execute certain action in the environment. And of course, this side, what you are seeing is 
the environment, this is the robot here, okay? It actually uh, interact with the environment and perceive what is going on here, okay? He know that there are obstacles that he needs to avoid and there is a door here that uh, he will have to turn over to get, to get in, all right? So these are, um, these are some of the uh, action that you will see when you have a robot uh, trying to execute certain uh, assigned uh, tasks. Okay. So now we also kind of convince ourselves that it is uh, required uh, if you want to have uh, intelligent, uh, you want to design an intelligent robotic agent that can uh, help you do something. Okay, you need to have this planning ability. Okay, so how do we actually go about doing it? Okay, there are, of course, a few different methods. Okay, problem solving is, is kind of like a problem solving process. Okay, when you want to uh, solve certain problem, uh, how do you formulate the procedure? So also similar to uh, designing of your algorithm. Okay, how you design algorithm. So uh, you want to specify the uh, start post and the so-called desired final post. Okay, but this is nothing but the goal of what, what you want to achieve. And so when you are doing that, you need to represent this agent. Okay. This is a representation. How do I end up? Okay, you need to come up with a representation of your agent and the environment. Okay, so some of you might know about self-driving car as a navigation problem. You know that the car will need to do localization and mapping. Okay, it needs to find out what is uh, happening in the surrounding. It needs to know where is it with respect to the entire world or the environment. Okay, so these are uh, representation required. And uh, you kind of need to first start off by formulating uh, this problem, okay? So it's a formulating of problem and then designing of solution. Okay, so designing of the solution is your algorithm design, okay? How do you come up with all the steps uh, to achieve the goal, okay? All right. So you have a uh, you, you can classify uh, all this in different way. I'm sure you, through this course, you have already gone through some of the uh, different form of uh, algorithms, okay? It could be heuristic, okay? It could be optimal, uh, brute force, kind of like a complete way of uh, doing something, okay? You do a brute force method, and it could be analytical, okay? Analytical, uh, most of the time, uh, you get to also uh, see the causality, the cause and effect, and be able to explain uh, what is happening, okay? And uh, in the context of uh, robotic uh, path planning, okay, you have things like complete solution, uh, grid base, okay? Some of you might have heard of the ASAR search algorithm, okay? A grid based method, you can split the whole uh, environment into various grid. Okay, there are also sampling method. Okay, uh, RRT, and more mathematically, you can use artificial potential field method. Okay, where you represent obstacles as a uh, repulsive potential field and uh, go as attractive potential field. So if you are moving here, you take the least energy. Okay, to move from one point to another. All right. Okay, so like what I say, there are two parts. One is to formulate the problem. Uh, the other one is to come out with a solution. So uh, don't underestimate this uh, problem formulation stage. Okay, once you are able to properly formulate your problem, half the battle is won, right? 
time, is it? Okay. So you want to specify the start post and your final post. And then you want to describe or represent how this agent is uh, with respect to the environment. So you need to know a few uh, terminology. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier on, let's say if I want to describe the start post here, okay, if this is a, okay, say if this is a 2D problem, only this plane, okay, the robot can only move this cup in this plane. So of course we need to know uh, the X, Y position and also the orientation, right? This is important. If you don't orientate it correctly, the water will actually spill down, right? So as you move this cup here, okay, you cannot take any orientation. You need to make sure that this uh, XA vector is always pointing horizontally, okay? So you need to plan uh, something that will move this from here to here so that you end up putting the cup here, okay? And in this case, uh, let's say I put this as x, y, and theta, okay? <clears throat> and each of these join here, you have q1, q2, q3, okay? Of course, they are the angle of this join, okay? You can choose to orientate each of these links according to this join input. So in this case, if you want to fully be able to uh, control this uh, state of your, or this uh, configuration of your cup, you will need to have at least three joints, all right? This three should be independent join. okay? So your control input is Q1, Q2, Q3. All right. So one good way of uh, planning from here is actually a little bit hard for you to see if you want to move this point here to here. Okay, what kind of uh, trajectory profile should you input to your robot such that the robot can perform this path? Okay. So you want to perform, say, this path so that you can get the cup from point A to point B, all right? You can also plot it in this uh, configuration space, okay? So one way of representing it is to say, let's say we uh, fix Q1, we only look at Q2 and Q3, Q2 and Q3. We can actually also plot this uh, manipulator arm, right? And it will look something like this, okay? Uh, theta 1, theta 2, from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, one thing that you might need to be careful is that if I move from this point to this point here, I can still continue to move, but it may come out from somewhere here. So it's like folding it in this. Uh, topological form. Okay, now it's a little bit confusing, I know. Okay, later we will see some example. Oh, actually we have this example. I should, I'm not sure if I can show you this uh, website. Okay, let's, let's try to see if I can get this website. Oh, I guess it's working. Okay, so let's say now we have this robot. Okay, so this is actually the, the robot with two joints. So I can move this uh, robot here, okay? This is just like the 
a robot, but instead of having three joint, I only have two joint. I can rotate this angle. I can also rotate this angle, right? So I can move the robot accordingly. So on the right side, I actually have what we call C space, configuration space. Okay, so let's say I'm this joint here. Do you see what is happening on the C space? It is moving in the horizontal direction, right? So this horizontal axis here is theta 1. Okay? And let's say I move the top part, theta 2. What do you see on the C space? It is moving in the vertical direction. Okay? So this part here is uh, theta 2. So you can actually plot theta 1 and theta 2 in this C space. So instead of uh, one way of representing it in the Cartesian way, so just now I asked you how can we uh, describe the post, uh, sorry, the position of this point. Uh, you say you can use x, y, okay, for this 2D painting. Okay, this is not the only way of representing it. Okay, if you have a robot that as a configuration, okay, you can also use the C space theta 1 and theta 2. It's just another coordinate system. And of course, this is helpful. Let's say if I, can I put some obstacles? Let's say if there's an obstacles, okay, I have two obstacles. These two things are blocking my robot. And let's say I want to move to a point here. I want to go and get this uh, this green green triangle. Okay, am I actually able to move this over? You can look at your C space side. Yeah, actually I can't really move it. When there's a red uh, side. Rate, rate uh, indicator meaning is actually in collision, it's hitting the obstacles. So you don't want that to happen. Okay. So uh, let me just slowly move this away for a while. Okay. So I'm playing cheat a bit. Okay. So I can actually move to the green uh, side. And so you can look, look at this. If I'm, yeah, okay. If I'm here, this T is here. Okay, it's not possible for me to reach the green side if you look at the C space, right? So I need to go this side and then come back here, so I can actually go to the green target. So you can actually do path planning in the C space, configuration space here. All right. So this is one uh, useful way. So defining your uh, coordinate system or actually the way you represent your uh, state, okay, is going to help you in planning. Okay. So this is just uh, one example. Okay. And then if we look at the... Uh, now that we formulate a problem, so now we, we, we know how to describe the problem mathematically. We can uh, use Cartesian uh, coordinate system to describe it in the workspace. We can also use configuration uh, space to describe. Um, so that is the part on representing or formulating our problem. The next part is on how do we actually design the solution. Okay, a few ways, heuristic, optimal, uh, brute force analytic. Okay, some of you might have seen this uh, search algorithm that actually uh, uses things like A star. Okay, uh, you can actually split them into grids. You can also uh, use sampling based method uh, that will quickly uh, converge to the best uh, path that is among all the options, and there are potential few methods. 
Okay, so some example to give you some uh, context. Let's say I want to burn a very big tumor. Okay, I want to send a needle in to burn and I need to visualize the end state. So if there's a tumor and I need to make sure that all this uh, ablation uh, coverage is sufficient to burn all this needle, I need to come up with the right uh, final position, represent where this position is with respect to the entire environment, let's say the patient here. And for the robot to be able to send the needle in, the robot will also need to understand their position with respect to the patient. And then uh, sometimes you, you have camera to help you uh, localize or find a position of certain features. And then you can send the robot in to do uh, the necessary work. So now we know that uh, this uh, planning is also uh, important. Okay. Uh, we ask ourselves that uh, it is important, but um, actually there are a lot of situation where planning is still very helpless in helping us to achieve uh, all these tasks. Okay, if you look at all this. Okay, so some of them, there are a school of thoughts of using more behavioral way of um, designing intelligence, okay, rather than coming out with a sophisticated plan. To them, like planning is just a way of avoiding uh, uh, how to figure out what to do next. So things like the idea of uh, autonomous, autonomous agent, where the agent uh, will have their own uh, agenda, okay? So an autonomous, autonomous agent is a sy system situated within a uh, part of an environment that can sense and interact with the environment over time, but it has its own agenda to pursue. Uh, so these are some of the definition of autonomous agent. And you see example like having this uh, agent uh, do reinforcement learning and some of them compete against each other, okay, in playing uh, soccer or football. Okay, some of the natural uh, situation like ants co cooperating with each other to accomplish tasks, okay. So you can see a lot of this example. And if you want to uh, classify them, okay, that could be physical, okay, in the physical world, and that could also be in the cyber world, like the pet man that you see here, okay? And some of them, like, uh, all these are natural, biological, and you can actually design something that is uh, not natural, artificial, like robots, and something in the cyber uh, world, okay? So in this case, uh, it is kind of straightforward. Uh, they have uh, independent goal-oriented entities that interact with a dynamic system uh, based on a set of rules. So in this case, this world will be what the agent is going to act on. And at the same time, it can sense and perceive. Okay, so they will have something that they will want to optimize. Okay, so you can have robot to do that as well. Okay, so... Uh, Agent-based modeling, let me just very quickly uh, make sure that this is not failing. So you just... Okay, so in group, they can have all these attributes like uh, decentralized uh, decision-making, macro-scale uh, behavior, and also exhibit some intelligence, okay? So some of this uh, specific case, okay, you can see uh, this, this uh, drone here can actually uh, do very um, specific uh, maneuvering. And in a swarm, they can do formation, uh, reacting with each other, okay? And they can also cooperate to collaborate to do something together. Okay, so a uh, good thing about this is having one agent adding to this uh, system is actually not, uh, the cost will not be uh, too high. When you are doing a full-fledged robot that 
as a planning, a com complete planning. When you want to add something extra, you need to redo all the planning. So this idea of designing a behavioral way is that uh, if you have three robots doing something and you put in a fourth robot, it is not going to uh, require you to redesign how the first three robots are doing. Okay, so this is, of course, one of the uh, advantage. So I talk about uh, artificial uh, potential field. A lot of time when you look at this uh, behavioral uh, kind of uh, system, like what you see earlier on with this uh, um, drone, they actually use very simple uh, idea of representing like artificial potential field. So you want this thing to move from one point to another and say there are obstacles blocking. Okay, what you can do is to look at this as few. When you get close to this, it will actually repel you. This side will also repel you, such that you go to the point where uh, it is this energy. And the goal here will actually uh, be attractive. Okay, so you will actually move, uh, taking the best path or the optimal path to get to your uh, position. Okay, so this is one. And we can actually use all this uh, in some of the uh, robotic application, okay? Especially so when we need the robot to work together with human, it's a little bit hard to model the human intention, right? So you can't really have a plan that cover uh, what may happen uh, when a robot is working with human. So we need some form of um, autonomy in collaborating with the human, like this robot can very easily uh, follow what the human is trying to do, but at the same time, it can also do something autonomously. Okay, when a person shift this robot to the right position, let me see if I can fast forward this a little bit. Okay, it can also, uh, this robot can also look at the ultrasound image, okay, to target and send the needle down to the right uh, position. So this side here is actually the patient, nothing to do with the robot. Like we are trying to show that the patient is actually breathing and moving. So the robot can look at the target from the ultrasound probe, which is from here, and then actually send a needle down to target this position. So you see that later the robot will actually send this needle down by looking at this uh, information here. Okay, so this part kind of uh, put in some planning for the robot to uh, achieve certain uh, outcome while working and interacting with the environment, including with other agents like human. And uh, in this case, this is actually a robot that is trying to imitate a human patient lying down and breathing. Okay, so the needle can actually go into the right uh, target. All right, so that is uh, basically a, a very quick. Um, uh, lecture on this uh, planning, problem solving, as well as autonomous agent. Now that you see a bigger picture about this whole thing. All right, so to very quickly summarize, uh, this planning is kind of like a two step thing. You have problem uh, formulation, you need to formulate your problem, and then you need to design the solution. There's a second step. Okay, and we actually went through things like how you represent it mathematically. Okay, there are things like configuration space, uh, and you can use a simple coordinate system like a Cartesian coordinate system. After that, there are different algorithms that you can design uh, for the solution to accomplish the task or the, the, to reach the goal. And after that, uh, planning, of course, is important, but there are also other uh, school of thoughts where you don't always need to come up with a very complete plan. Okay, you just need to have each of these agents uh, being able to uh, have certain um, agenda that interact with the environment to eventually uh, do something. Okay, so this way of doing it is, is actually using reactive control and behavioral uh, robotics to um, come up with something meaningful. All right, so basically this is, uh, that is uh, all the content that I have uh, today. So of course I will be around in the next five minutes if you have questions uh, to ask me about.
All right. So that will be end for today's lecture. All right. I will stop recording for now.